All right, going to take a quick time out here to cover a few simple access list rules um, that weren't uh, covered. Um, first off, we have the ability I showed you in the example how to block one IP address from from uh, accessing your network. However, a lot of times you want to block an entire subnet from accessing your uh, internal network, and that can actually be done with a wildcard mask. Um, essentially, I won't go into depth here, but um, let's say you want to block the entire subnet of 10.1.1.0/24. You don't want anyone from that network, whether it be 10.1.1.15, 10.1.1.150, to access that network. So that allows you to define a wildcard mask. So if we let's change this to deny, so that my example will make sense. <laughs> so if you um, if you deny it using this wildcard mask here it will deny the entire subnet. Basically, a 000 slash or 225 means that the first three octets of a zero means that it has to be examined. This has to match, this has to match, you know, the IP address has to be a 10, start with a 10 and have a 1 and a 1. And after that, it doesn't really matter, it's assumed as matching. It already matches. Just the first three have to match, that we don't care about too much. Um, wildcard masks are a, a very, very powerful tool, but they do take a while to uh, to learn how to interpret and how to define them correctly, so that you're blocking exactly the subnets that you want to, to use. So that's pretty much all I'm going to cover with the wildcards. Um, now for a little bit about uh, ACL processing. The processing for an access list goes line after line after line after line. Uh, it goes from top to bottom, and first match, boom, it's done checking for other matches. So if we had something like this, access list 1 permit 10 1 1 10 and access list directly beneath it, access list 1 deny 10 1 1 10 what would happen is 10 1 1 10 would be allowed to go through even though there was a deny statement in the same ACL. However, the deny statement was after the permit statement which means it doesn't apply. Also, um, an important thing to note, uh, there is an implied deny any any um, at the end of all ACLs for just a standard access list to be access list one deny any. You don't have to type that in, it's already implied. If it doesn't match, it throws it out. That's why many people um, will do access list one permit any. And that will just allow anything through. They don't want to you know, go through and permit everything. They just want to go through and um, deny the things explicitly that they don't want and then allow everything else. So that's just one little thing there. Um, and that's a few of the simple rules you should know about that. All right, let's take a quick look at what we have so far. Um, Let's go look at the internal, and we're going to do a do show run. And it shows we have the IP access group 1 applied to FA00 in the inbound direction. And let's take a look at that one. Access list 1 deny 12, 12, 12, 15 and as we just learned the implicit deny any and so let's take a look at how that works then let's say this was able to ping correctly before and now let's try pinging this again 172.17.10.2 and as you can see here reply from 12, 12, 12, 12, which is this interface right here, it's unreachable, which essentially means that it has blocked it using the firewall deny any statement. So to solve this problem, we're going to have to modify our statement. We're going to go ahead and do um, access list one permit any. And that is going to allow um, those pings to go through. Now, let's take a quick look at our access list once again. 
you'll notice that when we add another statement in, it dumps that statement after um, the previous statement. So basically access this one deny uh, 12 to 12 15 is first and then permit any is second and then the one that's not shown but is still there is access list one deny any so so let's go ahead and pull it up once more and we're going to try and ping again and there we go we now have a successful ping um, now there were, you'll notice we managed to block pings but uh, we also managed to block everything which isn't really what we're looking for so what we're going to do here um, is we're going to get a little bit more granular, get a little bit more options, and use an extended ACL list. So we're going to do no access list one. Boom. And do another show run, and we'll see that you notice it's still the IPX group one in is still there. However, it's not pointing to anything. So we're going to interface FA0 slash 0 and we're going to do no IP access group 1 in and do another oops, do show run and it should remove that entry from FA00 and great looks like we're back to having no firewall at all and we should still have perfect connectivity which we do all right, for extended ACLs, it uh, the syntax is access list and then the number 1 through 199 or 2,000 to 2,699, again an arbitrary number, and then deny or permit. Protocol, um, you can enter either something like uh, a port number or an actual protocol such as www. Um, what we're going to take a look at is different ways that uh, the Cisco OS can actually change it. It'll, it'll automatically recognize certain port numbers and some it may not recognize. Um, the source and the source wildcard is obviously the source IP and the source wildcard. Um, the destination is the destination IP and the destination wildcard and, the wildcard and then log and log input which we probably really won't cover much. Another um, nice thing about extended ACLs is you can actually name extended ACLs. Um, that comes in handy. It's a lot better than remembering a number. Alright, now we'll take a quick look at setting up a quick and dirty ACL um, for blocking ICMP. Uh, for test purposes, I did end up s quickly setting up um, a web server on my local machine. So let's go ahead and oh, 2.17.10.2 and I put it on port 8082. And you'll notice that I'm able to load that quite quickly and it goes through just fine. Alright, now Let's quick go to our internal router here. And let's go ahead and do access list 101. And let's say we want to deny ping requests. So that actually requires two separate statements. Deny ICMP any any echo and echo reply. Um, both these are necessary for one is the actual when it when it uh, hits the router and one is the reply that the router sends back. So deny ICMP any any echo. Let me make sure. Yep. And then echo reply. 